Hello, wonderful people. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly love and appreciate your support. Today we have a 30-minute vinyasa flow with crow as our peak asana. This will be multi-level, so I will be giving some alternatives to help guide you. If you are ready to begin, please roll out your mat, grab some water, sit cross-legged on your mat, palms facing up, and bring your attention inward. How is your breath? How is your breathing today? Is it shallow? Is it deep? Connect with it. Regulate it to a more calming flow. And if you are familiar with Ujjayi breath, please bring it into your practice right now. And whenever your thoughts interfere with your practice, make sure you bring it back to your breath. Let the breath guide you. If you notice you're holding your breath, you have gone too far. Always let the breath guide you and listen to your body. Bring your palms at the center of your chest in Namaste Mudra and bring an intention to your practice right now. It can be something you need to let go of or something that you want to bring into your life, into your reality. With your hands still in Anjali Mudra, Namaste Mudra, bring them to the center of your forehead, at your third eye. And gently open your eyes. Namaste, wonderful people. Let's get ready to begin. For this practice, you will need a yoga block, and if you don't have one, do not worry. You can do this with pillows or with a stack of books or both. So come into a tabletop position on your hands and knees, and we're going to do circles, circling our head in one direction and following it with the rest of our body. Reverse the direction, rotating your shoulders, rotating your hips, working out all the kinks and the body before we begin our practice. Now let's do cat cow. So inhale, cow, exhale, cat, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat, curve your spine, tuck your chin into your chest, move with your breath. All right, let's come onto our heels. So make sure that you sit your bum on your heels so you can get a nice stretch on your toes. We are going to be working out our wrists a lot today, so let's make sure we warm them up properly by rotating them in each direction. Plant the wrist facing down on your mat and just push your hips forward and back to get a nice gentle stretch on your wrist and making sure we hit all the sides of your wrist by rotating your hands to the sides, towards you, towards the inside. Plant the palms on the mat. Clasp your fingers and rotate your wrist. It's really weird to rotate it in the other direction for me. Just 
doesn't seem to flow, but we're still gonna do it. Shake your hands. Come back to tabletop and push down into a downward facing dog. Now this is your first downward dog, so make sure to pedal out the feet. Taking it nice and slow. And do not worry if your heels do not touch the ground. Now reach with your right hand towards your thigh, your calf, or your ankles. Take it at your own level. Other side now, left hand reaches towards the thigh, calf, or ankle. Look over the right shoulder. Release. Now let's do ripples with our spine. So we're gonna roll into plank. The last thing to roll out is your head. And back into downward dog, bending the knees if necessary to protect your spine. Rolling forward into plank very slowly. We are going to take slow movements in this practice for maximum activation on your muscles. A little more. Ripple forward. Inhale. And exhale. Come down into upward facing dog. You're going to look over your right shoulder, back to center, look towards your left shoulder, back to center. Now come into downward dog, take it at your own level. You may come into tabletop first and then downward dog, if that feels better on your body. Jump forward to the top of your mat and pedal out the feet. If your hands do not reach the mat, you can bring them over your thighs. Inhale, roll up, hands up to the sky. I'm going to face you so you can see what I'm doing. Just going to clasp our fingers and stretch to the right. Back to center and inhale and exhale to the left. Back to center. All right, we're going to do this three times. Sun salutation, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, come down to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. On our chaturangas, you may do knees, chest, chin, if this feels better on your body. Jump or walk forward to the top of your mat. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, Tadasana. Arrive here. Arrive in this pose. How is your breathing? Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, jump into plank. Chaturanga, slow, slow. Inhale, upward dog. Tuck your toes under if that feels more comfortable for you and come back into downward dog on the exhale. Drive that intention to put your heels on the ground, but do not push if it hurts. Sprint 
jump or walk forward. Inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Jump or step into plank. Ashtanga Namaskar or Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Jump or walk forward. Inhale halfway. Exhale fold. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's do Sun Salute B. Bend your knees. Make sure that you tuck your pelvis in. There is a tendency here to pop your bum out, but we're going to tuck it in for this chair pose. Utkatasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, jump or step into plank. Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg raises up. Bring that knee into your chest slowly. And we're gonna hold here for just a little bit. Activate your core muscles. Plant that foot in the middle of your mat between your two hands. Warrior one, raise your hands up to the sky. Back leg is at a 45 degree angle. Hands come back to the mat, send that leg back. Chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, tuck the toes under, downward dog. Other leg comes up, left leg up. Bring it into your chest. Activate your cat with those back muscles. So you are rounded on your back. Plant that foot in between your two hands. Inhale, arms up, Virabhadrasana one. Back leg is at a 45 degree angle. Plant your hands back down on the mat. Pivot the leg, send it back into plank. Chaturanga, inhale up, exhale down. If it's within your practice, stay on the tops of your feet for just a beat. If it hurts, do not do this. Plant the feet back down on the mat. Jump or step forward into forward fold. Inhale halfway. Exhale fold. Inhale, arms up, knees bent, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, chair, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, jump or step onto plank. Slow chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Inhale up. Exhale, downward facing dog. On the tops of your feet, if that feels good, if it's a good stretch. Good job, shake it out. Pedal those feet. Make sure you tuck your chin under and downward facing dog. All right, we're going to come down into dolphin and back up into downward dog. We are preparing our shoulders for the crow pose that we are going to be practicing, Kakasana. Lowering the elbows down and then back up just a few more times, just like that. I know it burns on the shoulders, but you are gaining the strength that you need. Back into downward dog. Now jump or walk forward into Malasana. Yogi squat. And you're going to make sure 
that your triceps are pressing against your knees. Move side to side. I'm gonna face you just so I can show you how we activate this pose. I want you to really feel your knees pressing on your triceps. Your hands fall where they land. Do not try to bring them closer to your feet. Just let them land where they may and get on your tippy toes and push yourself forward. We are not coming into the full pose just yet. I'm simply showing you what it is supposed to feel like on your triceps, on your knees, and on your feet. And now we're going to do some crow walks. Hug your triceps with your knees and just like before, hands lie where they may. Feel that activation and push yourself forward and a tiny little hop. So you are suspended in the air for just a microsecond as you walk forward. Maybe the feet don't come off the ground, but I want you to really feel how your knees hug your triceps. This is the action that we need to achieve Kakasana. And make sure that your back is rounded like cat pose. Just a little bit more walks. Keep your gaze forward and this will prevent you from falling over or from having that sensation of fear of hitting your forehead on the mat. It's like riding a bike. You don't look at the wheel or you fall. You look forward, round the back, hug the triceps and spring forward. That was great. You should really be feeling that. Come into Navasana, boat pose. And hold right here. You may bend the knees if this is a little too much for you. Otherwise, just stay right here with the legs straight. Hug the knees into your chest. And let's do that again. This time, we're going to use a block. You know, if this is really scary for you, if crow pose is really scary for you, and the previous crow walks did not quite do it for you, because you fear of falling over and hitting your head. You can bring a block or stack a bunch of pillows in front of you. We are going to place our chin on top of the block. So make sure you get the right distance between yourself and the block. If not, just adjust it like I'm doing right here. Same as before, get on your tippy toes, spring forward, hug your triceps, chin on the block. Maybe not both feet lift up today, maybe you lift up one and then the other. But even if you don't achieve this pose today, you are still building the strength necessary to get there one day. Now. I'm going to show you another way to use the block to achieve Kakasana. If you feel like you're not getting enough height to bring your feet off the ground, do the same activation on top of the block. Hug your tricep, get on your tippy toes, and lift up one toe, lift up the other toes. And then maybe one day, both feet come off the block. Great job. Come forward to the top of your mat. Let's try that one more time, Kakasana. If you're in a full crow pose, jump back into plank, Chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale down. Stay on the tops of your feet if that feels nice. 
jump or walk forward and sit yourself down again. We are going to do Navasana one last time. The legs can be straight or they can be bent, if that feels better for you right now. Always practicing Ahimsa, non-violence. No violence towards others, no violence towards ourselves. And that means listening to our bodies. Hold. Yes, that burns. I know, I know. Release. Hug your knees. Now open up your legs as wide as it is comfortable. Open up your chest, inhale, bring your chest back, arch your back slightly and come forward without curving your spine too much. So whenever your back starts to curve, that's as far as you will go. If it feels better for you, feel free to plant your hands on the mat to give you more control over this asana. Toes are pointing up. If on the other hand this is too easy for you, grab your feet and lower. Do not lower all the way down to the mat. If you are that flexible, the challenge for you is to stay a few centimeters off the ground. Good job. A few more seconds here. Inhale, come on back up. Exhale. Good job. Now let's bring the soles of our feet together into Baddha Konasana. So, the smaller the triangle, the harder this asana is. If you want to make it easier for you, make that triangle wider. Hug your toes with your hands. Inhale, look up. Open and exhale forward. Same principle here. Try not to curve your spine. If it curves, do not go further. Protect your lumbar region. And just breathe here. Long, slow breaths, deep breaths as we slow down our practice. Release the pose. I'm going to turn around now so you can see this pose better. We're doing Supta Baddha Konasana. So same as before, Baddha Konasana, Supta means reclined. So we're going to lay down on our backs. You may hug your elbows over the top of your head if that feels good. If you want a bit of decompression on your lumbar area, my back tends to hurt quite a bit. And this feels really nice when I do it. Just gonna press on your thighs lightly and press till you feel that decompression on your back. Only do this if it feels good on your back. Just breathe here. You may release your ujjayi breath. Just breathe normally now. And swing your knees, windshield wipe side to side. Hug your knees into your chest. Be a little ball. 
Now let's come into plow pose. So legs behind your head. Clasp your fingers underneath your back. Chin is off of the chest. Stimulating your thyroid gland in this asana. Now bring your hands at the base of your spine, support your back. And bring one leg up and then the other. Keep your legs active. And if it feels good for you in this inversion, bring your feet into lotus pose. Only if it's within your practice, otherwise just stay with your legs straight. Padma Sarvangasana pose. A variation to Sarvangasana shoulder stand. Let's hold and breathe. Gently lower your knees to your chest. If you are on shoulder stand, I will show right here at the top how to come out of this asana. You're going to very gently, very slowly release your hands, release your legs or lower your legs and very slowly vertebrae by vertebrae release the legs back down to the mat, fish pose. Arch your back. Toes are active and pointing up unless you are in lotus pose. The crown of your head is on top of the mat. Gently release the crown of your head. Release your legs if you are in lotus. Bring the feet down to the mat. And coming into your last asana. A very important asana where we integrate everything we've learned in the practice. Shavasana, corpse pose. Release the practice right now. Let your body release into the mat. Let it melt. Let your thoughts Dissolve. Inhale through your nose and give yourself an audible exhale out through your mouth.
Very gently, very slowly, with lots of love, rotate your wrists and your ankles. Move your head side to side. Bend your knees. Bring them into your chest, coming into that ball pose again. Roll onto your left side. We are reborn again after corpse pose. In this fetal position, with your eyes closed, gently come on back up into a cross-legged pose. Sukhasana. The most important pose. The reason we practice yoga is to be able to sit comfortably in Sukhasana, in meditation. It's the first asana that we learned of. Bring your hands in Anjali Mudra, Namaste Mudra at the center of your chest. Keeping your eyes closed. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much again for joining me today. If you want the full practice of this class, be sure to join my membership here on YouTube. If you have enjoyed, please hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of my videos. And do not forget to leave me a comment telling me what you liked about this practice. Thanks again, wonderful beings. Namaste.